everybody, welcome to Long the Revolution. Matt Piney here, your fearful, sometimes fearful host. I would like to be fearless, and that's our journey, part of it. Anyways, I don't know what I'm talking about. Welcome to episode three of Long the Revolution. I've been working on a ton of stuff behind the scenes, learning a ton. I'm I'm not a coder, but I'm trying to learn all that. I'm following the industry. I'm doing a lot of trading because this is my full-time job right now. Um, I, I don't have I don't have much going on there. So um, trying to find our way in the industry, and uh, wanted to go ahead and get out a, a third episode here. I think um, I, I'm I'm figuring out how I'm going to be doing the show. It's going to be a lot of changing and different things. So uh, it's going to be extremely malleable or flexible at this point, just so everybody's on the same page. Anyways, today I want to jump into some different things. Let's go ahead and just get right into it. I also want to make these a little bit shorter. If we can check this out, our dice roller. Also, as time goes on, I will be uh, talking to you guys about uh, Dim City, which is our project we've been working on for two years, uh, born out of the Sporos NFT, and uh, letting you guys know how that all comes about on the gaming side of things. We are uh, Dim City RPG is uh, writing out all the game mechanics. The book right now is, I think we're about 230 pages in. And we've got a lot of cool stuff, and we're building a lot of cool uh, support tools. You'll hear more about that. I'm not here to shill it so much. I will when the time comes because we've been working very hard. Our team's been uh, grinding on this, and we're super proud and excited for what we're doing. You can think of us as long-term character creation. You can check out our website, dim.city, and um, you know see what we got going on there so far. And it's going to get pretty loud in time to come. I love our dice roller. This thing is freaking fantastic so today i thought hey we'll use a little bit of check it out if i get 17 i'm the best i'm the best yay i'm the best in the world ah. okay so anyways the uh, dice roller is so cool it's so receptive to uh the touch too um our dev um Ian built this and put it together on our site. Uh, it's actually not live. Uh, we're just working out some stuff. But this is going to be a lot of fun for gameplay. And I want to be able to utilize this a little bit and kind of, I don't know, have some fun with it on the show. So I think he's okay with that. So the first things first, we got a couple things I want to uh, chat about today. I want to um, uh, go through and talk about some gaming, which I'm super excited about. NFTs, are they back? A little bit maybe we'll talk about that a little bit also we're gonna get into very light um, information on there has been uh, news coming out about uh, funding for terrorism via crypto I want to just talk a little bit on that and uh, we'll check out the BTC chart do a quick look at that I'm not gonna lot of, spend a lot of time in, in these areas I'm gonna point people to resources of people who I think maybe have a better grasp on things who are looking at things and just can have already done the work like I'm very efficient I want to be efficient I'm not here to be super popular myself if I can make a living doing this on the show or on this channel fantastic that's that's great because I'm doing what I love thank you for your support by the way but I am not um, a specialist in any specific areas i just follow lots of different ones gaming is one of the big ones for me oh let me step back so with that being said i'm going to probably uh, not talk about a lot of macroeconomic climate stuff some of the traditional finance stuff i don't know all of it i'm learning so i'm i don't want to mislead people you should always do your own research you should always if you're like i don't know what that means don't take someone else's word for it maybe try and learn what that means and dig into it and you know what using ai is fantastic for that so uh let's go ahead and roll the dice if we get um above let's say 11 to 19 which is a 16 we're gonna go ahead and talk about the misinformation so we're starting off with that so let's jump right in and let's uh let's see what we got here also i think i'm gonna start doing some live shows because i do so much with gaming and crypto like i have to do so much maintenance for DeFi, for trading for uh, my gaming positions participating in them it takes a lot of work uh it's fun but i'm like why not do that on the show sometimes which we're gonna do today i'm gonna um mint my atom car which is through the futureverse ecosystem we'll talk a little bit about that that is a cool 
cool ecosystem that I so many people sleep on. It's crazy. Uh, but anyways, we're going to mint the cars came out today for the Atom uh, project, which is underneath the Futureverse umbrella, all powered by Asto. Uh, if all that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Anyways, it's super cool. Our cars are our car claim is available. So that's going to be a part of what we do today. But I'll be doing maintenance stuff like that on a regular basis. Again, it's like two birds, one stone. I want to be efficient. I'm going to do it anyways. Why not kind of record it? see how the live thing goes see if we can get a live audience uh we'll see also uh collaboration is on my radar i really need to start collaborating i'll be completely honest i'm scared i don't know i don't know what it is i've always kind of had this uh non-belief in myself in certain areas and that's got to go that stuff's got to go we're 43 going on 44 gotta let shit, that shit go we're too old for this anyways uh thank you for being on my journey and let's roll a dice and just see what we got for fun 18 dude think about this wolf game crew uh anybody else think about this wool hey you want to play me let's go let's have some fun or choose your own adventure stuff we're gonna be doing a lot of that i mean a lot of this stuff is gonna come into play it's gonna be really dope so these rolls are no good but if you hold it down it'll like fire hold on pretty cool i'm geeking out i'm geeking out um so anyways i can't wait for that to be available for you guys let's jump right in and jump over so so this is what happened we had information uh senator warren sends a letter to the white house claiming that crypto is a national security uh being used to fund terrorism um let me okay there we are i'll just bring us up here transition over all right so um it's a threat to to fund terrorism so the whole push here is uh making everyone believe that uh crypto funds terrorism and that we need to we need to put a kibosh on it and control all of it which one of the big things about bitcoin is that there is no central issuer one of the reasons a lot of us are here is because we have lost trust in the financial issuers because they've debased our currency because they think our, we're stupid and um the trust is lost so or is very much beaten so bitcoin allows for since it's a decentralized network meaning that it, it's secured and validated by everyone across the world that runs the bitcoin uh node and uh, that validates any transactions one of the cool things about blockchain is that you can see everything it's very um everything is is right in front of you as far as transactions um you can track things very easily so really these are kind of networks that help the sleuths the people that are trying to figure things out which is a really cool part about crypto is that we have all these cool sherlock home on-chain analysis sleuths like zach zp uh, xpt or whatever this name is zpt i don't know what it is anyways there's all kinds of these uh forensic analysts for blockchain that's really awesome um but we have to we have to look at what's being said and what narrative is being fed to us. And so she sends a letter to the White House claiming it's a national security threat. We really need to get get control of it. And they're pushing towards a CBDC, central bank uh, digital currency, that's going to be controlled and they're going to be able to shut the lights on and off. That's what we're trying to avoid. It's going to be there and people will use it and that's fine. It's not going to be like, oh, it's Bitcoin and or this and none of that. See, that's a that's a big misconception for a lot of people in this in this industry is they think that something's going to be one way. I've never been a maxi, no matter what it is. Um, I don't I don't go, oh, OK, this is number one. This is going to beat everything. That's it. I think that's a, a silly way to think, especially with this kind of technology. Also, I mean. Yeah, it's just not the way I like to go about things. I think there's uh, there's a lot of good being uh, done, a lot of stuff being built. So she sends this letter over and uh, it says it's a national security threat used to fund terrorism. And it wasn't accurate, the information that they were providing. Um, they said that uh, Elliptic, which is an on-chain analysis company, said that so much uh, like a ridiculous amount here let's just check the article right here instead that there was a ridiculous amount of funding that went towards uh terrorism there's and then they came back elliptic came back and said there's no evidence to support this assertion that uh, i'm not going to say the names because i'll probably get 
cut off on YouTube or whatever, has received significant volumes of crypto donations. A full understanding of blockchain analysis uh, in the context of any analysis is needed, uh, which they've done. In addition, we have been in discussions to have this corrected. Uh, Elliptic has engaged with the Wall Street Journal to correct the misinterpretations. So this wasn't accurate, and it came out, and this was a letter that that was going to all of Congress to get them to sign something. It had inaccurate data. Uh, so this is what I want to do with our Gigabyte Greg. I'm going to go ahead and bring up old GG. And we are going to... I want to mute this real quick. All right. All right. So I'm going to send... Uh, he we are live on the show and I would like your short analysis of it. Okay, and I'm just gonna, this is this is kind of, a, I'm showing you a little bit of how I kind of work with some things. Um, I went ahead and copied and pasted this whole article. I threw it in here and I feed it to um, GG and we'll see what GG says. User's message is about uh, other topics, so I will continue with the conversation accordingly. If you have any further questions, what? Uh, please give me an analysis. I wonder if I didn't copy it right. Analysis on the article uh, for uh, funding of terrorism misinformation. Oh, I didn't need a question mark, but okay. Uh, it's uh, the Sam Sam Lyman, which he's with Forbes, cr uh, critiques the misinformation surrounding the alleged use of cryptocurrency by Hamas for funding terrorism activities against Israel. It starts by drawing parallels with historical instances where U.S. decision making was influenced by inaccurate intelligence. The central issue is a claim propagated by Sen Senator Elizabeth Warren and her congressional colleagues. The Hamas raised over 130 million through cryptocurrency. This figure was used to frame crypto as a national security threat and prompted a call for stringent policy measures, narratives. However, the credibility of the 130 million figure is challenged by Elliptic, which is who they quoted that gave out the information. That's who Elizabeth Warren said the information came from was Elliptic. Well, they came out and said no, and chain analysis. Two blockchain analytical firms which argue the amount has been significantly overestimated and misinterpreted. These firms whose businesses attract illegal blockchain activities suggest the figure likely includes legitimate transactions unrelated to terrorism. Furthermore, they emphasize the transparency of blockchain technology which allows transactions to be traced. Like I said, that's actually a plus for us. Um, the numbers, if you look at the numbers uh, through like FinCEN, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network or whatever they are, if you look at the numbers of how much cash, how much uh, crime is done in cash versus like what we've found on crypto, it's not even close. It's not even close. So this narrative that crypto is bad and that blockchain, I should say, I, I don't even like calling everything crypto because cryptography is what's utilized um, for verification, for unique identification, are actually for protection and utilizing the technology. But um, this idea that you can hide more things in it that you could funnel. I mean, you could do money laundering just like anything else. Um, I, I'm sure there's some of that in NFTs and, and crypto. Sure, it's going to happen. But you know what we've what I've learned in the last like three, four years of being in this industry. One, it's been the best testing ground in the world for finding out how things work. Because really, we've had scams. We've had all kinds of stuff. We've we've understood the um, the failures from centralized control. We've, we've seen bank runs. We've seen, like I was taught all this stuff in this industry. And, it's amazing and it's you know it's like you you make a mistake you get hit and you say all right well how do we shore that up you know and that's what i feel like is going on here this feels like this innovative space really feels like a place where we're um we're learning we're, we're all learning it feels like the best education i've ever had to be honest i just wish all my you know i wasn't trying to make a living off of all of it and i wish it was moving a little faster that's okay uh we're gonna get there um so and like and subscribe and you can help me maybe this channel will help me stay in this space thank you guys um so the credibility was challenged furthermore they emphasize the transparency of the blockchains the article then uh delves into the political implications of misinformation senator warren's efforts to pass legislation which she's trying to do against money laundering in the crypto industry as mentioned 
possibly being bolstered by inflated figures. On the other hand, voices like Senator Loomis, advocate for measures uh, approach, a measured approach, pointing out the relatively small role of crypto in illicit finance, just like I said. In essence, Lyman's article cautions against policy um, decision based on flawed data. Well, hey, the good news is there's tons of smart people in the blockchain industry. And there's tons of people that analyze chain data. We can help you guys out. That's, well, not me, but there's people that can help out. And I have seen conversations from the political sphere. It does seem like there's a lot of people that understand that, hey, look, there has been this debasement of money. There is the question of trust with, with, with uh, finance. There, there are people that care about this and and the idea of code being the center of um and and the central I- issuer of a currency or at least you know what bitcoin doesn't have to be a currency it doesn't have to be what i mean by that is it doesn't have to be a reserve number one reserve currency okay. oh ceo well, blackrock chairman and ceo it says right there on the screen so anyways this guy talks people really listen and he's saying this or he said this a little bit ago Rally today is about a flight to quality with all the, you know, all the issues around the Israeli war now, um, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a fight to quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold, or crypto, depending on how you think about it. And I believe crypto. Notice he says crypto too. He doesn't just say Bitcoin. That's something to note. It will play that type of role as a flight to quality. It's fantastic. It's 12 minutes, but it's worth the listen. If you don't know what you think about Bitcoin, if you're like, I don't know what's going on. And actually, you know what? Let's check out the Bitcoin chart real real quick, just to kind of talk about where we're at. I'm gonna just show, I'm gonna do a quick macro outlook on BTC. No, what? Stop. So the best way I like to look at charts is stepping back and looking at the macro so here we are on a weekly so these were our resistance levels we're breaking out value is up here at i mean the average value with this chart says that we should be valued close to 53 54 thousand looks like liquidity is heavy up in the 68 range um that was our macro top so um personally i'm i'm looking at this and it it's extremely bullish uh this is good we can see that we're pushing up not that we wouldn't drop drop back down and test some lows and grab some liquidity you know lower i, I wouldn't be surprised personally wouldn't be surprised if if we drop to twenty thousand. we're at 35 right now now i don't think that's going to happen and i'm not planning for it and that's not where my i'm doing very small small area uh bets till i show that we break uh, this 36 area, we do a little bounce, and then I think we're going up to like 42, uh, maybe maybe top out at 52 before, uh, well, we might have a pullback before then. Anyways, I'm learning these things. Don't take this from me, but this is, an, this is a chart that has been heading up, and I feel very confident. We bought in down here at 20, so we're feeling pretty good about that. Again, this is on the weekly. But if you look just at these channels, you can tell that we are rocking and rolling. And that looks pretty good. Let's use this regression tool. I don't know if you can use regression tools on it. So we're kind of bouncing off this. If we bounce off here, so we could have a pullback. And this is why I wouldn't be surprised. This is our last, this would be our, our last resistance flip support right around the 32 range so if we pulled back and bounced i mean that wouldn't surprise me one bit but personally i think we're going right up to probably the 48 range um yeah i mean look values up here so off of how i trade that's what i'm seeing um regardless i think it is the time to find your opportunities um and just kind of get some buy some bottoms as they come along so what i'll do is i'll wait for these little pullbacks that show that we're under value again i use the ats system and so these little boxes are whenever we see a little chop this is price is trying to be determined we believe it's a long-term macro of uh, bullish right now that's where i'm at so that means anytime i drop below here 
it's it's a buying opportunity um now since we've already come up so far it's small kind i just a little bit here and there but that's that's kind of how i'm playing this personally and then i'm also um i think uh, using leverage can be extremely dangerous it's a part of what it's a double-edged sword because it's really cool and fun to use and it can help you but it also is seems to be crushing an industry at times so um what i'll do is actually when when we get some of these lows i'll take out really small three to one leverage positions and basically just i'm talking very small and and just have a very small low floor our liquidation point because three to one is going to allow you to have a lower liquidation point and then that that basically i think it takes a lot of it, it, it puts you in a, a long position you can take let's say you have a thousand dollars if you take a thousand dollars break it up two hundred dollars pieces and put it on five different tokens you believe in and put three to one leverage and best if it's a point when we're like pulling back or something and you feel like okay this feels like it's a you know if we're like in here or something or even better i mean i'd much rather this is a 33 minute chart i would much rather look at you know our daily or something so when we were back here if you put you put in some you know some three to one leverage so for your 200 if you have a thousand dollars break up into five tokens that's 200 dollars per token well now you've you've given yourself more liquidity it's 3x each one so it's like 600 on each token to me that that's a smart way to go about it because it also allows for a lot of downside sure you're not going to get the ridiculous you know oh 50 to 1 leverage on 20 on you know whatever the 200 dollars you would make more money but you lose more money faster it's it's a pain and pleasure thing and i've realized that in trading if you can eliminate pain and pleasure and you're you're working on the analytical mindset of and and having the passion there but just being able to trade without thinking that you're going to lose your ass that's the way to go okay i'm not making this a short show anyways bitcoin looks good we are bullish let's look at banter bubbles and just check out what's been going on banter bubbles is dope banterbubbles.com let's look at the week so if you look on the week i mean hold on sorry let me bring this up if you look on the week we've got just massive gains here cakes up 74 percent. i didn't even know that i've been riding casper uh caspa that's a good one if you ever want to check these out so this is on the week this is on the day i mean we're seeing massive gains now with gains comes pullback so re realize that uh don't be afraid to take profits i'm taking bites this bull run i'm taking bites i'm i'm not going heavy in one area i'm protecting my downside another thing about leverage trading i kind of like small kind of leverage trading very small three to one two to one is that you also can you can add to positions but you can also if you get out of the position quick you're you're in stables so in most cases which i like that I, I think it saves a lot of steps and is a really smart way to play a very volatile market we're gonna see volatility just hit crazy i mean i bet you i'm looking at these um sometimes in the future and it's gonna be like oh it's like 30 percent up in an hour like that's that's gonna happen we've already seen like some some crazy charts i mean look at Look at Cass. So these are the ones I'm riding right now. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm, I, I, I'm, my big bull run runners right now are what I'm focused on, Cas, Caspa, which is just blowing through the roof. Uh, ETH, obviously, which I think is gonna be breaking out here very shortly. Uh, and then once we hit this 21 mark, yeah, there's room to run. I've been riding Rune, which Rune is a play on, on Bitcoin exchange, decentralized exchanges, which I think is enormous and very important. And the revenue coming through for Rune is like, I think it was like 170 million, like yesterday. I don't know. It's really high. Uh, Pepe, very small, just the shit bag, because that's a meme coin that people are going to run. Injective, super strong. AVAX has got a lot of room to go. Soul, GMX, Render. My top ones, though, Rune, Render. Uh, these are these are kind of my big dogs. Uh, Solana, I think, is going to do really well. 
there's a lot. I mean, really, you can't go wrong. I don't overdo it and, and get crazy. But that's like I said, I, I put really small chunks in areas, right? A little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, I can't talk. A little bit of leverage. Okay. Anyways, moving on. Let's, uh, let's roll the dice again. How about this? Let's go. What's up? 10. Oh. That means we're talking NFTs are back. Are they? Are they though? Are they? Let's let's come in. Let's come in here. Let's let's come in here. Let's see. Are they? Are they back? NFTs? Eh, settle down, pump the brakes a bit, but it's very exciting. I think what we're seeing right now is we are now in the phase. I bet big on gaming. I've I've real I've seen early on I saw that gaming is is really going to work well with blockchain and with the elimination of jobs and and, and people and we've seen what gaming has done it's a, a 200 300 billion dollar business uh, web 2 gaming so we I don't think that there's a world where people are not like well wait a minute I think I'd like to own what I earn in the games versus just uh, losing it if the game decides to shut down their system so this is where you know one of one of the focuses on gaming, and I believe very strongly in it. So I think what we're seeing right now is we're seeing uh, the first iterations of games starting to come out. Just like I said earlier, the industry is full of lessons. Be careful right now, okay? Let's let's check this out. Let's dive right in and check out what we have. Let's see what kind of. Um, um, Okay, so our NFTs back, maybe, um, maybe not, maybe. So, anyways, we're seeing the da daily volume has been heading up. That's that's for sure. Um, but when you look at the weekly volume, we still, you know, this might be the we're starting to tick up. It does look like we came out of here a little bit. And we're starting to tick up. I'm not gonna say we're back. This could just be a. I mean, I'll tell you what, it's really cool because we're seeing the rotation. I'm very interested to see in this cycle what happens with the rotation of funds. Last, uh, the last run-ish uh, time uh, in 2021 and whatnot, we were seeing the market run and rotation of over into NFTs, which is really cool. And that was where a lot of, a lot of the uh, profits came from for a lot of people trading. Um, will we see that again? Where is there going to... Because a lot of people got just smoked with NFTs. Um, we all learned about unreimbursed... Uh, I'm sorry, not unreimbursed. We all learned about um, tax loss harvesting. So selling at a loss and then taking that tax. And then also realizing that the U.S. government um, um, and uh, our tax bodies don't allow for more than $3,000 of capital gains losses carry over each year. You can only, like, that's insane to me. That's another thing that just shows that they're trying to screw innovation. Like they're, I, I swear, this is total conspiracy. I just spit all over my computer. Total conspiracy, but it's there and I can't help but say it a little bit. I'm a conspiracy kind of guy. I'm gonna drink some coffee. What if the United States, who took the dollar off of, uh, we, we used to be backed by gold. That was dollars, turn in, get your gold. 71 Nexus took us off the gold standard. Look it up. Do your research. It's true. It's not conspiracy. We have debased our currency. Inflation is a debasement of currency by putting out so much currency because we needed it. I'm not saying that we didn't need it after COVID. We needed our stimmies. Stimmy. We needed, uh, you know, uh, 2008. I, they bailed out all the banks. Apparently, Hank Paulson says we needed it. There was no way around it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So anyways, um, when you have Kool-Aid and you throw water in it, it loses its flavor. Uh, the U.S. dollar has been debased. Go do some research. It's true. It's part of what brought me here. What if... The other countries are like, you know what? Screw you. You've been debasing the dollar. We're going to, you know, forget this. We're, we're going somewhere. And the U.S. is like, look, look, look. Okay. 
you guys can have block you guys can have crypto innovation we'll give you a head start we'll block it up with regulation we'll have the sec throw in a bunch of roadblocks and waste everybody's time and try and lock shit up in court okay and you guys do your thing be innovative go on you got it but then we're gonna come in like that's what it feels like sometimes man it really does Anyways, I don't know what that has to do with NFTs, but uh, let's move on. So NFTs may be back. I don't know. I just got distracted. Um, I'm not talking about that yet. Uh, let's let's check out OpenSea. So our top, actually, let's go to Nansen. Uh, yeah. I might need... Uh, In the meantime, if I roll a five, I'm the best in the world. Oh, six. Let's do it again. If I get above a 10, I'll make a goofy face at you. Oh, I can't see it. Okay. Hey, we got to fix that, Ian. <laughs> got to be able to see the dice. Look at that. Look at the physics on this. Oh, uh, goofy face time. Goofy face time. Oh my God, I'm an adult. All right, so um, we were on, we were checking out some volumes. Let's go over to NFT Paradise. This is where you can check out a lot of analytics. I also recommend doing analytics. There's a lot of free stuff too. This one does cost, so be aware. But if you look in this seven days, um, we're seeing some volume. I mean, shit, seven days, 23,000 ETH. Is that right? Jesus, poor days. Yeah, this is interesting. We're also seeing a rotation within tokens um, of different different um, projects. So right here, you see the volumes. There's a good amount of volumes that have been coming through. Um, and then, so I'll look at that. We'll go over to OpenSea and kind of see. What I've noticed is there's a lot of games that are starting. Like I was saying, gaming is starting. We're starting to see the the first iterations of these games, which I think one of the lessons, one of the, what are we going to learn here? What's going to be our lesson? Because that's what I've been finding out is that we're learning as we go. Like I said, bank runs, uh, centralized control of assets, uh, over uh, under collateralization of assets, uh, commingling of funds, all these things. I didn't know anything about these. I was taught them in this industry. To me, that's better than the college I went to, really. I've learned more here than I have ever there. So with the gaming, what's going to be the thing that we're going to learn the most? That's what I'm curious about. And I think it's what it's going to be is we're going to, I think we're going to see a lot of um, pumping rugs, really, that are just taste of games. I don't know that, and I'm not saying it about anything in specific, uh, but I would be really careful. Do your research. That being said... <laughs> I, I noticed the game's kind of popping off like the Forgotten Ruins. That's a that's a game. I, I don't know who's all got games going, but a lot of these a lot of these projects have games going on. And then we're also seeing a uh, reemergence of some of the classics. Uh, Cryptodes uh, looks like they're pumping a little bit. Um, where is? Let's go to trending. I don't actually uh, use so nonish punks. I saw this one. And I was it was at like uh, 0.069, I think, and I was like, okay, so they've got they've got a game going. It looks like it was in UE5. I did some research, looked into them, jumped in the Discord to just get a feel. They've been around for a little bit. I'm not saying to buy this by any means, but I was like, okay. Point, point zero six nine. I want to give it a, a you know we're gonna see and test it. I, I've got my hands in so many gaming uh, fronts right now plus our own project. I don't really have a lot of time to jump in and get too gamey with it. I'm more kind of doing this as a trade to be honest with you. Um, I'm gonna kind of see where these go because it looks pretty cool, it looks pretty fun, and it looks like there's a playable demo that's gonna be coming on the way. So, but. This also could be, oh, also a big part of it is this is a game that was backed by the Nons DAO. I don't know how much they, I know that they're all, I think they're all CCO. I, I'm not sure. CCO, if you don't know, is like, I create something, anybody else can use it and create whatever they want. And like, uh, you know, 
the it'll get exponential creativity because more eyes will be on it so it's like if you have a sample for a song and like instead of sell, selling that sample you you create the sample you let other people create with it do whatever they want with it and then that um basically value then comes back to the original the original creator or at least recognition and that there could be a lot there and the collaboration is where the coolest shit's gonna come from that's the biggest part of it so nouns uh nouns are a really really cool collection i mean they're like i think the they're like 30 eth for the cheapest noun uh but this is just i believe someone who's a nouns holder who then created this project they seem like they know what they're doing with unreal engine 5 and uh like i said the game seems pretty cool so i checked that out i'm not here to pump that i'm just showing that there uh, there's some different things i'm noticing when we see the volume come back in a little bit on nfts i'm noticing that okay well there's some gaming things firing off um one of them that i noticed that i am a holder of is the wanderers and i want to talk about that right after i roll this dice and get a 14. oh three is my favorite number she just guessed it okay if if i get higher than a 10 i will sing to you ready oh look nobody wants to... oh you guys are lucky you're so lucky okay all right so moving on the wanderers these this was an early collection back in 2021 that i got into and i was just like the coolest they had the coolest art it was so dope and actually they were so far advanced in their their nft jpeg art like that one's not mine or anything but um i've got three of these and i've held on to them because i love the building well, first off the, the uh nick the guy who's running it um whose project it is is also a youtube guy who teaches people how to do 3d after effects all these different kinds of animation and stuff so he, he was just so much further ahead than anybody else when it comes to this and i just loved it i love the aesthetics he's got a little bit of uh fun let's see let's let's check out some traits i'll show you um we'll say right arm he's got some fun stuff in here uh you know there's uh, boom, 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 boom. anyways some fun ones cool so i saw him pop back up on my radar i'm like oh cool what's going on they were on i saw it on OpenSea. it popped up and they were at like 0.12 they're at 0 0.073 right now um and so i was like oh there must be some stuff stirring let's see what's going on and here's the first look at their game i'm gonna turn the we'll listen to them a little bit. It's kind of tough. You're, cr you're cruising though. on HP. Uh, level five. Yeah. Actually, we won't listen to him. But there's Nick right here. And then uh, this is a professional gamer, Orangey. And uh, the gentleman running the show, I should know. Because, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't remember his name. But thank you for the content. So this game is dope. Um, we actually game will listen to him a little bit. Release, you will not be able to do that. You, you will have to start over. Um, We're not going to die, though. I don't play so, I don't think it's will. pretty rad. Um, I think it's very rad. Uh, if you, there's all kinds you of can, tools and whatnot. Are this game today? Guns you can get. Let's see. Level that you want to. Um, so now it's so, been, uh, you know, uh, it, it reminds me items. of Gauntlet a little bit. It's kind of cool. Although this is a single player game, I believe. But basically, this is definitely something worth looking into. I'll put the link in our description. I am invested in this. But after seeing the game, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. So Wanderers are, are cooking and we're seeing games start to come out. And with that, I want to jump into Adam. I want to jump into Futureverse a little bit. Um, check out Schiller. Schillerverse? I don't know what he goes by anymore. I'm not sure. But the dude's putting out all kinds of cool material on Futureverse. Also, I'm going to do episodes, individual episodes on these. Like I said, I'm, I'm in, you know, so many different gaming projects. It's going to be ridiculous. And I'm like, okay, how are we going to play all these games, manage these assets? Like, it's about to get bonkers, bro. So I'm in Alluvium, which is huge. It's going to be enormous. Check it out. I'm in Wolf Game, which is doing things the right way. They're, they're um, voting on a farm council right now. The token needs help. Everybody knows that. There's a lot of love there, a lot being built. 
I'm invested in that, and I believe that that's going to be a cool one uh, as time goes on. It's different, but it's cool. And then, um, you know, obviously Dim City, I'm spending a lot of my time uh, getting us going. Our book is 250 pages in, and we're going to be making the next steps here. Uh, the game mechanics are getting laid out right now. It's really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've got that. I've got um, Chicken on Avalanche is really cool. They've been building forever. I've been betting on teams, man. Just the, the I've been paying attention to the builders. Uh, Hytopia is crazy. Hytopia is going to blow the doors off stuff. They have taken a route I haven't seen any... I, haven't seen anybody make in that they took basically minecraft um all legal they created their own servers they're they're running their own thing they're basically solving a problem for a current huge massive database of players um and they've solved a problem that that and and applied all kinds of token ownership uh, asset ownership they've done tons of stuff i'm not even doing it close to justice i maybe i'll do an episode on it sometime i would like to as well as wolf game as well as all these games chicken um i would love to do all of them i it's just going to take time and i'm doing things when i can there's so much going on when you have add in your <laughs> this industry you gotta go just take a minute so anyways um i plan on doing some more um on the gaming front because i'll be doing it anyway so why not record it see where it goes we'll see if the live stuff takes off some of the biggest players though i be i bet on builders and those are some of the biggest i'm probably missing some and um future versus enormous they have been front and center and that's what we're going to do today adam let's start off by letting you know a little bit about future verse well, one of the reasons that I came to know Futureverse was running across um, non, I'm sorry, yeah, non-fungible intelligence, but this is an altered state machine and they have these brains. Basically what they believe in, I'll keep it as simple as possible, they believe that these AI agents so will be trained, you train your agent and then they play the games for you. And so they've got all these different, Futureverse has so much under its umbrella again i'm not doing it justice i'll do this right but um i believed for a long time in what they're doing because they're saying okay so we have these brains which are nfts i have genesis brains they they're still priced pretty low right now um and i i've taken a huge hit on on this this uh this project like enormous but i believe very strongly and it hasn't shook my um conviction uh, one bit. Um, so basically you train through reinforcement learning these brains in different areas in different games. The characters, um, the 3D asset characters for whichever game you're playing, this is a soccer game, AFA, which is really cool. Um, uh, it hasn't come out yet. Right now they're doing a FIFA run and stuff. They have big marketing promotional um, uh, partnerships. It's, it's insane. They're not small. Um, Next Legends is a boxing game. I've already started creating my characters. We'll see more about that as time comes here. Let me actually show you a, a little video I made. Because what I'm realizing is I'm like, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to have all my characters kind of come out of a camp, right? It's like the DFC or Dim City or something along those lines. One of these camps. So right now I started creating because I really like doing... Um, I really love here. We'll have to find this. Bear with me here. I love doing animation. I love learning all this stuff. This is one my daughter created, Shyla F Fury. So <laughs> my five-year-old daughter has created fighting out of the DFC, Shyla Fury. She likes punching and boxing so much, like a lot, like more than anything. Anyways, my daughter created this character. We, you go into the system, you got to um, do the hair. You, they gave you, when you minted the uh, fighters on blockchain, you got the, the f just kind of molding of the character. Now they're, they're bringing out the customization, which that is where that intrinsic value floor comes up. 
okay? That's what I've believed in for a long time, that there's intrinsic value that as people have experience with these characters, and we've seen it with PFPs. Who would have thought PFPs would have this and that? People have have gotten value, intrinsic value, because their hearts are kind of in it. They're loving it. It's a part of who they are. Well, it's the same thing. The game is going to be that plus freaking times 20. I believe. Um, so she created this character, it's Shiloh Fury. So now this character is, I'm going to put a brain in it from Altered State Machine when the time comes, when all that functionality rolls out. And she's going to be able to fight other characters. And she'll be good we'll, or bad. And we'll, we'll say, okay, we'll train this way. Work on your jab. Work on this. And they will get better over time. And then those brains in those characters, they retain that learning. And you're able to do whatever you want with it. I think there's a whole lot here. I really do. It's something I believe very strongly in, and it's why I'm probably overexposed to gaming. Also, I had this early theory um, that gaming is kind of separate from traditional markets, and a dude in his basement doesn't give a shit about what uh, um, Jay Powell's staying, saying for the Federal Reserve. He's not gonna. They're not gonna give a shit. They're gonna keep their characters, keep playing. That could still play out. Uh, we definitely are seeing the, the traditional markets. They suck liquidity. When the traditional markets are shit, and, um, you know, it, it hurts us. So uh, they also got a patent, uh, altered state machine on their brains. They have a, a U.S. patent. I believe that's, yeah, USPO patent. So that's pretty cool. Let me bring up, I want to find, uh, okay. Boxer and top fighter out of the decentralized fight collective, or as commonly referred to, the DFC. Marco grew up in a tight-knit community and cut his teeth in the dark streets of Dim City alongside current Next Legends heavyweight and longtime pal Magnus Payne. Marco honed his skills as an elite assassin. His love of data analysis makes him an engineer of dominance, always using data to better craft his fighting style. He is calculated and dangerous. Dope. So, if anybody's curious, I've been using uh, CapCut for this, um, for my editing. It's so easy, super easy stuff. I really like it. So, um, yeah, it's just a little bit of uh, what we got going on there. The Adam Carr claim. So, with the cars, the cars, and you guys are going to have to, you're going to kind of go through the, what I do on a daily basis for this. So, right now, I've got my... I'm not showing you my pens or anything. Don't worry. I've, I've got my hardware wallet. For anybody that doesn't know crypto or anything, this hardware wallet's just USB to USB-C or USB-C to USB here. And this is where I can hold Bitcoin. I could hold um, my assets. And it, it basically, to make it as easy as possible, it just verifies that I own it. It's with crypto cryptography inside these, I'm able to verify ownership. So you can forget almost anything else and just know that, look, um, crypto is a way to verify unique ownership. Uh, there's a lot more to it and we'll get through it over time. But I'm going to show you guys kind of what I go through on a daily basis here. It's it's not the easiest process in the world. I'm going to just put in my pin and log into my um, hardware. This is called a hardware wallet. And so, so I've logged in here. This is one of four because I keep different assets in different places. I also have some assets in, in soft wallets, which means you don't need to use the device that is also there. I just, I believe very strongly in what I've seen uh, over the years in keeping things diversified. That way, if something, you know, if there's a hack, something gets exploited, something dies, I'm not gonna lose everything. I think that's how people should do it. So on the future verse, we're gonna kind of log in here and it's asking me to sign in so then i'm going to be prompted on my what i'm using a ledger and i'll go ahead and just sign this message so i have learned and i moved a lot of my assets to the hardware wallet when they were a lot worth a lot more money um i don't know the best way to really be running games because using this too much is going to be a problem but i think that Everybody at the Futureverse, they're smart enough. A lot of these gaming uh, projects are smart enough that they know it. Right now, you're just looking at some of the stuff that I own uh, within the Futureverse. So you'll see here are some of my boxers. They don't have the, um, the added 
Oh, actually, they do. Yeah, this is the haircut. So that's Marco Pini. That's the Shyla Fury. I had to make a game with my last name. This is Marco uh, Italian Heritage. Hey, it's the Marco. And then we've got Magnus Payne. I'm wanting to kind of make these stories come together. I'm going to use ChatGPT. It's going to help me, and we're going to kind of create these stories because I think there's a lot there. And um, yeah, Isaiah Lincoln, Lars Vandenberg. So we got a five five uh, fighter camp, and within. Each one of those fighters, we have bags. This one's a better bag than these ones. The uniqueness goes up. Um, and so these bags, when we open them, I believe they're gonna have gloves, shorts, um, and maybe something else, I'm not sure. So uh, that would be really cool. These are all AFA, these are the soccer players. So this, these are soccer teams that will, all of this is machine learning. So reinforced learning is, is what all these games are gonna be doing. You can think of it like if you've ever seen that movie, which I didn't even really see, but uh, Real Steel, where he's like controlling the robot. It's kind of like that. I think there's gonna be an enormous, enormous space for that. and. I think that building kind of your camp is going to be really cool. And also, I, I'm using like Dim City is where some of my characters are fighting out of and whatnot, which is actually uh, what um, Dim City RPG, the Sporos, that's kind of, uh, that's to them. That's to us, our side of the project there. But um, I did talk to the team. I was like, you guys cool with this? And I was like, of course. We're all about collaboration. And that's what we're trying to do. We believe there's there's going to be exponential creativity and providing tools and, and, and making this cool stuff is just going to allow people to create cool stuff. So everybody was fully on board with that. Uh, I'm not going to like, you know, hijack any stories. Anyways, we'll see how that develops. It'll be pretty cool. These are the first series brains. These are the main generative brains, which have extra functionality. And then these are all ones that I have mined. So this was from staking uh, the native token that you utilize for Asto. I'm really telling you so much. This is the, these are nodes basically for the silo network, which is communication network within Futureverse. So that's what I've got so far. I am thinking about a party bear because I'm a music dude. I kind of need a party bear. That's another one they got. I haven't even scratched the surface. I didn't even talk about fluffs. I didn't talk about it. Like they've got so much going on. The thingies are like... I don't know that there's any projects that are as far along as the Futureverse when it comes to AI, when it comes to 3D assets, when it comes to building tools. Like they are building... A suite of creator tools, a lot like what we're doing at Dim City, building a suite of creator tools and, and gaming functionality and mechanics and stuff that people can play in. Giving you a sandbox and saying, let's go, let's see where this goes. This is going to be fun. And by the way, if anybody from uh, Futureverse is looking at this, you guys come out with a basketball game, hit me up. One of the main reasons that I um, was so excited about what we're doing at Dim City and what we're seeing in this space is that I used to play video games, uh, NBA 2K, and I, I would love it. I actually told this to one of the um, heads of Futureverse, David. Well, he's switched roles now, but love that guy. Um, I, I, I told him that one of the coolest things I, I used to love is I would play NBA 2K, and I would play like uh, t like 20 seas uh, seasons in, you know, to where all the, the players are like players that are new that were drafted, not real players kind of thing. And that was so much fun. I would even catch myself just watching the games because I had built an intrinsic value from, from uh, in my head going, oh, this care, oh, he's playing so good. I'm gonna, you know, I'm working with my team and just building them. And they're all created characters. Like there was, I was just, I always knew there's something there. And this feels like it's on that same page with what they're doing, with what a lot of these projects are doing. I think they're, that is being overlooked massively. And um, I think that it's going to be enormous. So this is kind of my collection at this point um, within the Futureverse. Again, I'm pretty invested into them. Um, so of course I'm going to talk my bags. Understand that you know you you do what you need to. So this is my Adam um, card, my membership card. Let's get to it. I am definitely taking way longer than I ever thought I was going to. All right, so I'm going to sign in with Future Pass. Um, into the Atom site. So my wallet is being hooked up right now and it logged me out of my hardware wallet. So usually um, these are just for verification. 
and for initial sign on and and then if you're doing any large like transactions or something but i think everybody's on the same page that look we don't want this to be too cumbersome i think everybody understands that and especially especially these guys oh mint's paused um oh okay well i guess it was paused so i i can't do it huh Oh, it's paused. Huh. I wonder what's going on there. All right. So we're going to be doing that later. No worries. Uh, I guess we'll be doing that another time. I'll come back. Uh, we'll get it knocked out. We'll check it out and see what happens. Um, that's it for right now. I'm pretty excited. We've got a lot going on. Uh, this has been episode three.